Hey guys, it's Trisha Carr. I have new exciting things going on with my Mystic Arts Academy. You can now subscribe to receive all of the live monthly content for about a third of the investment of a single class. Included are at least one downloadable guided meditation per month, two live events ranging from classes, channeled messages, group readings, intuitive development guidance, Q&A sessions, and tons of community. You'll also have access to a private Facebook community for fellowship and support, and this space is kept super sacred and high vibrational. Your subscription gives you access to the whole library of classes and live events, which are on a vast array of topics. All events are offered online by Zoom video call, and many are also offered live in person at my studio here in Los Angeles. Subscribing to the Mystic Arts Academy is also a way for you to support the Charmed Life podcast and engage on a deeper level. I'm offering the subscription at a super low rate of $22 a month. Joining now locks in this rate for as long as you're subscribed. Click on the description of this episode or go to my website, trishacarcharm.com, and click on Mystic Arts Academy. I look forward to connecting. to Charmed Life. I am your host, Trisha Carr, and I want to thank you so much for being here. If it's your very first time, this podcast is both on YouTube as well as any podcast outlet, and it is all about magic, nature, and all of the mad- wonderful wild stuff of this universe. We sometimes go way, way out there into the ethers and talk about cosmic star being guides, and sometimes we talk about inner healing, personal development work. I am a multidimensional medium, a hypnotherapist, an animal communicator, and I am also a spiritual teacher. I, actually, that's primarily what I do. I teach people how to open their intuitive abilities on my own with my own one-on-one programs and the mentoring programs that I do as a, and um, coaching programs, I should say mentoring, coaching, online and on-demand classes, and also with my wonderful friend and the amazing intuitive channel and spiritual teacher, Crystal Ann Compton. She is the founder of the Lightworkers Lab. If you haven't heard me talk about the Lightworkers Lab, I deeply encourage you to come and join. It's just an absolutely free spiritual community on hosted on Facebook. So find it as a group, the Lightworkers Lab. I am a head teacher there and there is a limitless amount of fellowship and resources for your personal and spiritual development. All about metaphysics here on this program. And this particular episode is just so lovely. My guest is just packed with information and wisdom and different tips for you to be able to be your wild and magical self. Her name is Danielle Delsky. She is a heathen visionary, an Aquarian mischief maker, and a word witch. She's the author of a few books. Her most current one is called Seasons of Moon and Flame, The Wild Dreamer's Epic Journey of Becoming. And she talks to us about the flame tenders and different ways to have story and ritualized manifestation. It is amazing. Danielle teaches internationally and has facilitated embodiment trainings, wild circles, communal spell work, and seasonal rituals since 2007. She is the founder of the Hag School and the lead teacher for the world's Flame Tender Facilitator Training. A link to purchase her new book is below in the description. You're going to get hooked. I just know it. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I will tell you that this one looks a little bit different. Now, if you're a regular listener or watcher, because we're on YouTube as well as your podcast outlets, then you'll notice that it sounds and looks different. And if you're new, just know that we had to be a bit flexible. You see, this is my professional studio. I am, we are in the midst of our 2020 pandemic. And so I'm having to, I am mostly like all of us are, regarding the safer at home um, restrictions. Now, as a podcaster and a media person, we're actually exempt from the order. But nonetheless, 
it is requiring for me to be a bit flexible. Of course, I don't have my wonderful producer, Kurt, who is able to get this really technically intricate situation going. And so the way this interview is conducted is just on Zoom with the laptop. So the portion of the interview is a little bit different, but I hope that you enjoy it anyway because the content is powerful. The energy is magical. I'll see you on the other side. Hello, Danielle. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate all your patience, you guys. We are amidst the um, pandemic still. And uh, so we look a little bit different than, than I normally look with my podcast and sound a little different. But what's more important is that we come together however we are and we share the light. So I have Danielle Dulski. Thank you so much for being with me, Danielle. I'm so excited to get into your work. You share such a beautiful light and so much empowerment. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it to you. Would you like to share with the audience um, how you, what your journey is about and the work that you're doing? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me, Tricia. Very happy to be here. Um, from my cocoon to your cocoon. So that's exciting. Um, I think that communal connection is so important right now during these strange times. Um, my work is very much about uh, story medicine and witchcraft and the importance of living slowly, which is interesting to talk about right now. Um, so yeah, and and um, and like the the importance of tending to the spirit of the moment. So kind of approaching each moment as if it's sacred and valuable and then it becomes sacred and valuable so all of that you know was my work anyway <laughs> but right now uh you know during these times where everybody's cocoon looks a little bit different but i think that regardless of what your cocoon looks like we know that we won't emerge from this not transformed right so um yeah, so so I think you know, like there's a there's a great composting that's going on right now of, in our hyper speed world, and so it's about digging out what's just not going to belong once we emerge as butterflies. <laughs> what what was part of our caterpillar world that won't fit in our butterfly world? Yes, and it's so interesting because that does seem to be. I mean, there's just a clash of the old and the new right now. You know, uh, it's like we are having, we're realizing that we have so much new, like you and I are able to do this. Yeah. And yet we are, we had other systems that were old that were still online and they're kind of, I just think they're needing to collapse. It, one beautiful example of it is that since everybody worldwide has been having to stay in their homes in these major cities, Mother Earth has been healing herself. And mm -hmm. so we're, it's going to make us value one another, the presence that we get to share in whichever way and whatever ways we do, because this remote, remote connection that we're doing is reminding us of our true non-physical abilities to be with one another anyway. Right. The, the moment, because I, that's something that I've been, I, I'm having, I was having a hard time getting my regular system on my, my pro, more pro professional system. And we, we failed, I failed on you three times to get this meeting going. <laughs> So I'm just like, it's so funny because it seems like, you know, that's the message that I'm receiving from your work and you've just been so patient and so present. And then the, the last time, literally when I, we had to cancel the appointment while we were there, I said, remember I said, I think we should reschedule because I'm definitely not connecting to the fact that a perfect timing and perfect synchronism and presence right now. <laughs> so thank you for that. You are, yeah. I, I appreciate the work that you're doing in my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because, you know, in having to lead, so I was supposed to lead like this epic retreat for my book launch and like all of these other events for the book that have in some, some, some of them have just gone completely away. And then a lot of them have just been moved online. So this idea of tending to the spirit of the moment and making it important, it, partly out of necessity, because it's easy to approach online things and, and podcasts is a little bit more casually. And 
it's like we can't right now like this is what we have like we have to approach it like this is the epic ceremony as if it's like you know a coven coming together or something like this is it this is the the poignant space in time where some sort of big transition is going to take place and so um so yes so so tending to the spirit of moments that might seem a little bit more mundane mm -hmm. um it's it's like the essence of witchcraft anyway but it's everything right now yes. yeah that's beautiful and there is nothing mundane as you said everything is sacred mm -hmm. what's that's uh actually just the other day in a in my a class i was talking about presence and how every single moment is equally precious and that you know on the one side this human brain, this human mind says, well, then nothing is special. And it's like, no, that's why it's even more special is because it's equal to all, it's equal to the first moment that source created anything. It's just as, it's just as precious and important. Yeah, right. That's exactly it. Like, it's so easy, even, even as witches, it's so easy, like, when our spells come true, like, when our manifestation magic comes true, we are so quick to just write it off as, like, coincidence, like, yeah. even when we've done all of this work, and I don't know, like, there's a, there's a particular space of time, like, a few months that it takes to, like, look back and be like, wow, that really was me that was that was my symbolic action and, and me you know dancing and co-creating with the universe but there's this space of time where like we're just so quick to be like that's not real that just <laughs> that, that though, just yeah. sort of happened coincidentally and with all of your experience well fortunately something like experience actually helps to i think in to argue with that critical mind that's saying no yeah. it was just it was just coincidence but then the the critical mind is now learned also but wait a minute it happened 1000 other times so <laughs> <laughs> so obviously tell us about your witch tell us about your craft what yeah. what what is this what is the, i know there are different kinds of versions people identify differently is it wicca i would love to hear all about it. i'm super excited i'm like i'm a guy of chick myself so all of the <laughs> Uh, so my, my witchcraft is not Wicca. Um, Wicca is kind of the religion of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, my introduction to witchcraft was very Wiccan and I was part of a Wiccan coven in my twenties. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't for me for a few reasons. Um, mostly because there's a lot of rules. And so people that that come particularly women but not only women that come to witchcraft from a lot of religious wounding uh they're very resistant to all of the the rigid structures and the rules and the guidelines so it's good to i think it was like swami vivekananda who said it's good to be born in a church and it's bad to die in one so it's good to have that lens in the beginning and those systems in the beginning but then you sort of strip away what's not yours and so my witchcraft has become a kind of like an art uh, that is a way of living and a way of seeing the world that involves a lot of spellcraft, but also a lot of body prayer and movement and a lot of story and mythic medicine. Um, so everybody's witchcraft is different and not every witch is Wiccan. Yes, that's what I've, uh, that's what I've understood. And I, I, uh, very much resonate with the non-Wiccan, not not for any, but just personally, because yeah. I did I what I did come from a church, and so I'm like, yeah, Wiccan's a religion, and I don't really want to learn another religion. It's not really interesting to me. I actually my old religion, which was uh, evangelical Christianity, the wisdom from that still shows up, even though I'm not practicing or studying it. But it was actually, as Swami Vivekananda says. Mm -hmm. it gave me spiritual growth and mm -hmm. there was a, there's tons of inspiration because it's created by humans and humans are inspired and yeah. so that inspiration shows up but you know there's while i may also borrow from other systems because again everyone has their own personal religion no matter what mm -hmm. uh, i really resonate with the idea of the non-religious which it's just your personal craft mm -hmm. and yeah. working with rituals i love tell us about your spells Tell us about body prayers. Both of those just stood out to me. Like, I want it. I'm thirsty for it. Give it to me. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Let's start with let's start with spell work. So, uh, spell is a symbolic action, 
and spells can be done for a variety of purposes. The basic ones are manifestation, so to bring something into being, banishing, so to purge something, uh, protection, so some, to, to protect something that you value in your world, um, and healing. So those are the big ones. And then under those umbrellas, any spell has basically five different parts. So there is the intention. So what are you intending to do? So let's say we're intending to um, manifest, let's say $10,000, because that's, that's an easy, easy example. It's not easy to do, but it's an easy example. So we I are- like 10,000, what difference does it make? I think it's Abraham Hicks, she says, it's just as easy for source energy to manifest a button as a castle. <laughs> so Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so if I'm trying to manifest $10,000, that's my intention. And then I will create the container. So witches do that in a variety of ways. It's a way of creating sacred space, whether it's full on circle casting, calling to the directions and the ancestors, or it's just kind of giving a nod to the four directions without having to go through a lot of different motions. There's lots of different ways to do it, but, but creating a container is important. Otherwise, your spell is like cooking without a pot. <laughs> so you have to create this specific container within which you will raise energy, which is the third part. So energy raising can be done through body prayer. It can be done through singing, through drumming, through chanting, uh, through art making, or even cooking. Kitchen witches raise energy through cooking and brewing. So there's all of these different ways to raise energy in order to infuse your intention, empower your intention, which would be the fourth part. Um, so if I'm manifesting my $10,000, I've set my intention, I've called the directions, that's what I usually do in my practice, and then I invite the primal ancestors, so the way back forebears, and then the loving descendants, so the yet to be born, to come a little bit closer to me. So that's part of my container creation. And then me personally, I almost always raise energy through body prayer. Um, so I'll go into body prayer in a second. And so I would be, I would be asking myself, where is the feeling of abundance, prosperity, wealth, whatever name I might give my $10,000, where is that feeling in my body? So it's an important way of making sure your spell doesn't go awry because I could get that $10,000 by getting like hit by a bus or something, right? And I don't want that. <laughs> so, so I'm always trying to attach my intention to the embodied feeling of what that is. So if I'm feeling very abundant when I'm getting my $10,000, then I'm making sure I'm not getting it from a lawsuit or something that I didn't intend, right? So, yes. so I'm asking myself, where is that feeling of abundance in my body? And then I start to move in ways that will expand that feeling. So I ask myself, what color is abundance? What shape is it in my body? What temperature is it even? How does the energy move? And then I move in ways that will expand that vibration. And then eventually in only two or three minutes, you fall into a repetition. And so there's some sort of repetitive movement that might not be particularly beautiful, but it's born from the intention of how do I expand this feeling, right? And so say, you know, this can be a very simple body prayer. And so I'll move in this way for, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes in order to expand that feeling. And then I infuse all of that energy into the intention, usually through vision. Um, and it's difficult to explain that without sounding really bizarre. Oh, are you kidding me? We talk about alien abductions as spiritual awakening on this program. So yes, you can get bizarre if you like. Okay. You have to, though. <laughs> so, um, so, so I do it, the, the, the vision work is through this practice of time weaving. So all of this would fall under the umbrella of infusion, yeah. right? And so if I'm weaving with time, I am attaching my future vision of me with my $10,000 to the present moment, to a past seed memory when I felt that same feeling of abundance, right? Ooh. So it's kind of like, Ooh, I'm I'm gonna gonna that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like braiding these three strands of time together, future vision, present moment, seed memory. And then what happens is, and I'm moving through my body prayer as I'm doing that. So 
so what happens is your your memory and your vision they all start to feel the same your vision doesn't your, your vision feels like you're remembering it in other words right. um so so manifestation is very much about remembering the future yes. and so this shift in consciousness happens and that's what all all witches wiccans they, they they almost all will tell you to look for that shift in consciousness when you're moving through a spell there's some kind of a change that happens that signals okay it's happened it's finished you've affected something right and even though this sounds like a very elaborate thing that takes hours and hours it doesn't you can do this whole thing in like you know 10 or 15 minutes um yeah. And then after that, the fifth and final part after the infusion would be you ground the energy and you release and open the container and you let it go. So mm -hmm. you're not constantly going back and revisiting the spell. You, you recognize that it, it is finished and, and right. you, you know, you've sent the message into the universe. So that's body prayer and spell work that's 101. Phenomenal. I love that as it, it is, it's, it, it it's a structured protocol, but it has so much flexibility. And I mean, I think it's just really beautiful. I highly recommend, I'm going to, and I highly re recommend folks to go and jot down some notes. And obviously it's, it's very alive. It's very evergreen every time you do it. And yeah. I, I love that so much. I, there are parts of that that I definitely do, but I love structure because I'm a Capricorn moon. <laughs> I'm a Pisces sun with a Capricorn moon. So I'm like, I have to do something with this water. So it really, I really resonate with it. And one thing that I think it takes care of for people is some of us are, are um, non-specific manifestors and some of us are specific manifestors. And then I think some, some of us are a little bit like um, a, a mix of each. You know what I mean? Sometimes specific manifestation is good for you, sometimes non-specific. And some of the law of attraction practices that are taught, not all, but some, almost force specificity to the point where it makes a person feel too rigid and austere and they don't really connect to the true underlying energy of it. Whereas with what you just described, even if you use $10,000, you get so much in the underlying energy, 10,000 is just a symbol at some point and you may actually be manifesting a million dollars. It doesn't, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter or, or uh, some other kind of exorbitant abundance that may be cash or not. Am I right? Is that, a, is that an accurate um, interpretation I'm kind of picking up on? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. You know, the, um, you know, patriarchy and the age of reason have like, you know, woven into everything, including witchcraft and Wicca. And so a lot of early Wicca is very kind of heady and it it doesn't it doesn't in my, in my experience anyway it doesn't admonish the body or denigrate the body but it doesn't involve the body as wholly as the psyche and so there's a lot of vision work and psychic work that's important but for me the big realization in my witchcraft late came late 20s early 30s was that it's all about my embodied experience of what that thing is Mm -hmm. which doesn't have to match what anybody else's is right like your your inner feeling of abundance might be completely different from mine um so so yeah so so being able to work in embodied witchcraft where the inner feeling is kind of primary what that does is it it gets at the resistance that a lot of people have unfortunately that comes from like i don't really know what i want you know, like if, if I, I, I have witchcraft apprentices and that's a big thing, like people say like, well, I don't really know what I want to cast a spell for. How do I know? And so that discernment in witchcraft is really important. And it, 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 it takes a lot of repairing the severance that has unfortunately happened between body and mind because mm -hmm. your body, while it's constantly trying to protect you and can go awry in a lot of ways because of trauma, it is still very, very wise. Yeah. And so, you know, when we tap into the body's wisdom through movement in our witchcraft, it, 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 it helps you tap into the frequency of what's really, really yours, mm -hmm. which yeah. might be $10,000 or it might be a million dollars or it might be, uh, you know, no dollars. <laughs> and, and that's fine. All of that's fine. Because the body's wisdom would bring exactly what it is that is right for you. It's, yeah, it's right. And it's, it's, it's psychism potential is boundless. In its, yeah, yeah, in its formed and becoming form. I have to highlight, and I we we may name. I'm gonna 
we may name this episode manifestation is about remembering the future because yeah. I, <laughs> ooh, did y'all hear that that's what she said i mean i work I, first of all, I'm a hypnotherapist in addition to a multidimensional medium. So as a multidimensional medium, even when someone's like, I want a past life review, mm -hmm. I say, well, all time exists right now. So would, we can go in, but it may be your parallel life or it could be your future life because those are all existing too. And right. certain kinds of timeline work where you actually connect with a future you in an astral experience and you, and within that guide, the technique, I guide folks to actually swap information and make a, an energetic exchange so tell the future version of yourself what you've learned from this perspective and then and that way it's an it's an, a balanced energy exchange and also acknowledging that your embodiment right now is as it should be uh, you know what i mean it, it is and so is the future and so you you're just going to collaborate with one another so i i told yeah. i just wanted to share that with you i totally resonate with all of that and i love yeah that you also weave in, you braid in the seed. Ooh, that's so good. I love that, man. Yeah, because wow. like we know how memories feel. We know how, like when we experience the memory, we know what that feels like. So when you start to do the time weaving, which is kind of like this psychic dance between those three points, then the vision in only like 30 seconds to a minute, it starts to feel exactly the same as the memory does in your head. Right. Um, as you're dancing in that imaginal plane, which is just as real as the imaginal moment you're having in this present moment. It's all there for us, that causal plane. Right. And, and, and to, to your point, what you said, that is usually how I introduce people to the practice of time weaving, is I ask them to consider a moment from childhood that seemed from childhood or maybe later, um, but not recent, like at least 10 years ago, if you can go back that far and find a moment where you felt like either someone saved you or someone was watching you or there was like some sort of mystical experience going on. Go, go back and consider that moment and then what if that was you you know what if you in remembering that moment made that moment mystical yeah. and something about that question opens a portal for people where it's like oh okay <laughs> yeah. maybe i'll humor you for a little bit longer <laughs> yes yes absolutely the time traveling aspect but it, it that it is real and mm -hmm. Yes, and I'll, I'm teaching, you know, guiding people through soul retrieval or teaching them the process of soul retrieval where you would go to that part, you know, from this perspective and give yourself what it is that you need and mm -hmm. trusting that it is adjusted in all time and space realities because time and space are subject to the consciousness. It is mm -hmm. a property of the consciousness, not the other way around. But mm -hmm. then bringing the conscious and bringing the form to it by celebrating the body and all of her wisdom. Mm, that's good stuff. Yeah. Right. So talk to me about, so you teach people, you have a couple of, at least a couple of beautiful books. I know you have um, Seasons of Moon and Flame, which sounds like my jam. The Wild <laughs> Epic Journey of the Coming, The Holy Wild, A Heathen Bible for the Untamed Woman, and The Most Wild. I'm not, not, I'm not reading those very fluently, but <laughs> okay. I would talk, so you, um, so you, you work with people, you do, how, are you, you teach, do you teach in workshops or how, how do you train people in some of this work? Yeah, I, a, a few different ways. So I have, uh, I founded what's called the Hag School, um, where I work with a few different co-teachers who are also witches and ritualists. And we lead, I have a witchcraft apprenticeship, which is sort of a smaller circle of people that is online and in person. And then we all together have a coven, which is all online. So it's like a monthly membership coven where we do a lot of storytelling and spell work together. And, um, and then we, we also lead retreats in person. So not right now, obviously, but usually we lead retreats where we all get together on a mountaintop and uh, work all of this magic in person. So yes, so all of that. And then we also have what's called the Flame Tenders Training, which is an in-person facilitator training for those who want to run ceremonies and rituals for other people. So yeah, all of that. That's amazing. And so the, the author, I mean, the, excuse me, you're the author of Seasons of Moon and Flame. And so the Seasons of Moon and Flame has, sounds like it has to do with some of the, the rituals that take place, the tenders of the flame. Uh, can you yeah. share a little bit about that book or some of that uh, work that you're doing a little, however specific you want to get? Okay. 
Yeah. yeah. So we'll, oh, sorry. we will put the links to Danielle's books in the description. So be sure to click and go and buy her books. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, Seasons of Moon and Flame is my most recent book. So it just came out a few weeks ago. And in that book, you sort of, tra as the reader, you travel around to the four different houses of the sacred hags. And these hags invite you into their house and they tell you stories. So there's one story for each of the 13 moons. And then the rituals and ceremonies that are introduced in the book they're kind of born from that story or they're rooted in that story um so the book came from visits to my grandmother's house in my late 20s uh, sorry early 20s late teenage years where she almost raised me during childhood but when i went to visit her at that time it was this really weird time i mean like it is for everybody it was this weird time <laughs> in my life and my visits to her house took on this very predictable rhythm where I would like come in and she'd feed me a bunch of food and then she would challenge me in some way like there was some sort of question that was like a bite where it was like oh I don't know um and then after that there would be integration or wisdom so that was the way like my visits to her house would would um very predictably uh occur and so i started thinking a few years ago about how because she died in 2015 and so i think a lot about her mm -hmm. and how everything good in me kind of came from her and how like my core lessons really came from her and my grandfather during childhood um and so i started thinking about how the moons of each season they sort of have the same rhythm so the first moon of any solar season it's like there's a certain amount of joy and excitement to it, right? Like the first warm spring day or like the first autumn wind or something like that. There's like a little bit of excitement to it. So it's like the nourishment, right? But then that second moon, the middle moon, it's like, oh, I'm here now. And so that's like the moon of challenge, right? Where it's like, now you're here, now you have to do the work. And then that last moon of any season, is the integration so it's like the weaving together of the joy from the beginning and then that fight from the middle moon there's an integration that happens that also sort of prepares you for whatever the next season is going to be so that's the rhythm of the book and then yeah in the in the flame tenders training and also the apprenticeship we go into how do you hold space for other people to experience not only the joy but also the grief and the gratitude and the paradox um that are within every season and dominant in certain seasons so so how do you do that in a safe way how do you do that in weird spaces like online spaces and also in person so my work has become very much about that to the point where it kind of feels like a calling um, I think that we're we're getting to, and I've said this for years, but like it's especially being something right now, we're getting to a point where everyone is going to have to be able to pick up a bunch of stones in the middle of the street and have a spontaneous grief ritual and have it mean something, right? And so so the flame tenders training is very much about that, that you know, it, it in a way it's a return to what we might call the past, but it isn't really the past and also a way of communing with what we might call the future but it isn't really the future right, right. so breaking the cages of time yes that's beautiful you know um and that, that being able to break the cages of time like that gives us so much freedom and, and aligns us with our full capacity our full power our full multi-dimensional will and you know connects us to that higher self higher perspective mm -hmm. and helps us to appreciate the whole story because mm -hmm. when we get mired down like the the second moon which would be the challenge moon when we get dense in the moment and and you're actually non-present if you are right. being limited in your scope presence is welcoming in all of the time space reality because that is eternal that's true presence is eternity right. that's it sounds like your grandmother was was she, was she as professed witch because she definitely is <laughs> coming in and feeding you, challenging you, and then giving you wisdom. <laughs> That's amazing. That's like a fairy tale. <laughs> I know. No, she was definitely not. Uh, she was not a professed witch at all, but she was so good at 
this like elusive slow living like I remember her she was busy a lot of the time cooking and stuff but I remember like she could sit and drink tea and stare at the lake for three hours like a cat yeah like I look like cat. cats right. <laughs> that's the life they're trying to show us every day and I'm up hopping around and doing things or banging on a keyboard. <laughs> right. Yeah, my friend's here behind me. So Hi, showing us how to be. <laughs> What's your name again? I forgot. Willow. Will okay, I thought it was Willow. Hi, pretty Willow. <laughs> oh, hi, gorgeous girl. Oh, pretty. <laughs> That's your familiar. I love it. <laughs> yeah, she definitely is. Um but yeah, so slow living. So that's a gene that I didn't get, right? So like I don't by nature do that. So um, in, in talking about the book, I like to say, you know, I'm not coming, coming at this from a place of like born superiority. Like I have to work really hard yeah. to take time and stare out the window, right? <laughs> it's, just not, yeah. it's not in my body to do that, but uh, it's a skill that I practice. Yes, that's gorgeous. Uh, well, so your um, your different apprenticeship, apprenticeships and your coven are these open full time? Can folks find you and um, endeavor to work with you in those many different ways that you explain? Yeah, the coven is al always open, ongoing enrollment. The apprenticeship, there's different times of year when enrollment is open for that, so it's it's not open right now, but it will be in uh, a month or so. Okay. Wow, yeah. that's so great. Danielle, oh my gosh, um, there, so much information, <laughs> so much more energy and empowerment and love and, and the embodiment principle, how important that is. Mm -hmm. Time weaving, I, uh, I, I'm just so grateful for you <laughs> for having come on. I feel like some of my listeners are going to make a PDF out of this and like <laughs> <laughs> really absorb it. So is there uh, anything else you'd like to share and whether it's about your work or the you know, these current times, anything you want to share with the audience um, on this session? Yeah, yeah, that's a heavy question. I mean, these times are so strange, right? So um, I've been challenging people that I work with to like, see how weird you can get right now, you know, like how, when we're talking about time weaving and how that feels like a, in the body, it kind of feels like a stretching of possibility or an opening of potentiality or something like do things that make you feel like that, like liberatory, uh, you know, push some boundaries, get onto the fringes in whatever way you can right now. I love weirdness. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm all about weirdness. Oh, I have to share with you too that I am a, a, a lunar goddess. I'm a lunar channel myself. I, I chart the moon every 29 days, partly because, or 28 and a half, 29 days. Uh, part of the reason is because I'm in, I don't know if you know human design, I'm a reflector. So I'm a lunar being. So the moon has always been very important to me. Okay. Someone just introduced me to that because they thought, they sent me like an Instagram message because they thought I was that rare one. That's a yeah, reflector. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, reflector. I'm, I don't think I am. I took the test and I don't think that I am, but, yeah, but like, yeah, I don't know that much about that system, but I feel like a manifesting generator, which I think is to me is like the coolest type because it's kind of the opposite of the, gener of the reflector. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's got everything. Reflectors have nothing. <laughs> None of the time. It's like, it's just like any other archetype. All of them are beautiful and balanced right. and everything. But I can understand why someone thought that because the reflector is the lunar being. Um, but mm. obviously the moon, she's here for all of us. So <laughs> yeah. How cool. Um, so well, this has been just so amazing. I appreciate you so much. And I and please let me know how I can support your work. Um, and you are based where because I know you do some things in, um, in person. So let folks know where are you based? I'm outside of Philadelphia. Okay, great. But yeah. then of course online, which which is what we're all doing now. Anyway, I think yeah. that's really cool. It's it's actually I I most of my business and the podcasting and everything I do most has been online. And, and I think that the non-local experience is is something good that is coming from this safer at home and everything that we're doing is that we're recognizing those tools that we have right before us and the non-local experience is is the reminder of that um, ascension above time and space reality and it since we all already are online we might as well connect with people online you know yeah. what I mean and right <laughs> save some of 
save some of the hustling, save some of the pollution. Yeah. And so I just want to encourage everyone, because this is something I think is so great. Most of my students, most of my clients, I do work with remotely. And it, it is just as beneficial an experience if you find a teacher like Danielle, if you find a guide that you want to work with and you don't live in the same state, work with her anyway or him anyway, because it is still your calling, your pull to them. You, you actually bring different things online when you, in the relationship when you're remote to one another. And right. both experiences are valid because then when I have a, I'm a part of the Lightworkers Lab, which is, if folks who listen to the program know this, it's like a 10,000 person online community for mm -hmm. spirituality. And we have a retreat about once every year. And so when I get to see those bodies of those, you know, that the souls that I love have, then yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. But our relationship is just as real and fruitful. And the kind of the benefit of that is I'm not missing them as much right now, all of my online friends, because I have the same relationship whereas <laughs> my friends and family who I have a physical relationship with, I'm having to miss them because I don't get to hug them right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. It's so true though. And, and you know, when you work with a teacher online, it actually is so good for integration. Like when people are coming to me and they're like spending a week with me and then they go back to their lives, we take so much time to prepare for like, what's your strategy for doing that? Like, that's going to be a big deal having to like land back in, having been completely removed. But when you're in your home and learning, there's like this constant weaving that's going on anyway, which is really cool. Um, yes. Yeah. I was seeing that, as you said, even before you said weaving, I saw weaving, you know. That's yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Danielle Dulski, this has been so amazing. And I, I just, I can't wait to continue to connect with you and support your work however I can. Please do keep in touch and let me know because this work that you're doing is so powerful and so important. And it, by the way, I do have some um, masculine folks in my audience. This is not just for those who are more of the majors and the feminine in this life. It's for it's for any and all. It's it's uh, even though we are all responding to an over heavy-handed dose of toxic masculinity with the patriarchy that we're overturning, masculinity is beautiful as well and we inhabit and we embody both of those. So do ch you know seek out Danielle for that work because we could all use it right now. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you so much. You're so wonderful. What a beautiful light. I really appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us on this episode. I hope you will check out Danielle's information in the description. Check out her book. If you are local to her, then eventually maybe you could actually join her in person. But I really mean it that online working with folks is just as magical. And, and there are new kinds of magic that come online when you are working remotely with folks. Because, you know, this remote connection that we're doing is reminding us, rem for us to remember that we actually connect telepathically, telempathically, energetically in all of those subtle forms. That's why we created this technology. It's a reminder of our natural and spiritual technology. And I want to tell you guys that I am still up and running in full force with my Mystic Arts Academy. We are meeting weekly with uh, for our live um, hypno journeys and meditations. And we're also meeting twice per month doing our workshops. I have one upcoming on mediumship, uh, a two-hour class on mediumship. And the community and the support is just so amazing. So do check that out also in the description. And that is this episode. I had the most fun. I hope you did too. And I hope you are feeling blessed wherever it is that you are. Even in the midst of challenge, there is great opportunity and there is growth opportunity for us all. And that's the vision that I'm holding for us is the ascension vision. So much compassion, so much comfort to you and however you are managing this time. And thank you so much for shining your light on our beautiful world. Thank you for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Oh.